It's been about a month since Apple launched the new M4 MacBook Air, and the more and more I use it, the more I'm convinced that this is the best value laptop of all time. Not even just the best value MacBook. This thing is in a whole different league in terms of value. I mean, this just hit legendary status, just like the previous M1. For $999, actually $950 on Amazon right now, you get pretty much everything you need for a great laptop. You now get 16 gigs of RAM, which is just fine for a lot of people. You have the amazing build quality materials that Apple is known for. The keyboard, the trackpad is great. You have reliable software that's getting better every year. The resale value holds so well, and of course, the M4 chip, which is insanely fast, as I'll show you in this video. But before we get into it, it's definitely not perfect because it's missing a couple of things that would make it even better, which I will go through in this video. However, the more I think about how good of a laptop this already is, the more I realize that Apple doesn't want to make those things better, or else this laptop will completely cannibalize the sales of Apple's more expensive MacBook Pro models. Yes, I am convinced that this is that good, especially in this economy where more and more people are leaning towards less expensive tech devices like, let's say, the M4 Mac Mini, which people are loving, they are praising Apple for mainly because of that price, and like, let's say, the iPad sales. Like, look at this chart and look at how less people are buying the iPad Pro models and much more people are buying the base iPad. And I'm expecting that same effect to happen this year because the new M4 Air is really that good, being the first great upgrade since the legendary M1 MacBook Air, seeing as they've fixed all of the issues that we've had with it. If we actually take a trip back into memory lane, I mean, it's been almost five years and everyone loved the M1 MacBook Air back then because it was $999 and came with a much faster M1 chip that destroyed the previous Intel model in every single way. But don't forget that the M1 Air only came with eight gigs of RAM and it came with that older design language that was quickly outclassed by the 2021 MacBook Pro redesign that's so much better but now, think about it, with the M4, we're getting double the RAM. We're getting the new design language that looks so much better matching the MacBook Pros. We're getting a much nicer and brighter display than we had before. We're getting much faster Thunderbolt ports and MagSafe 3 charging. We're getting much better battery life and a lot faster performance. Just take a look at how much faster the M4 is compared to the M1. 58% faster single core, which is the most important thing for everyday regular use as it changes just how snappy the laptop feels and how quickly web-based apps open and run. I mean, for web browsing, 63% faster in Speedometer 3.0, that means it's gonna be incredibly snappy. Also, things like web design with Figma was a lot faster. Just take a look at multi-core, 73% faster, which means that performance apps will be a lot more faster and reliable. Just take a look at Xcode programming. I remember people said that they were using M1 MacBook Airs for programming. Well, look at this. The M4 is crazy fast. The multi-core stress test in Cinemas 2024, almost twice as fast with the M4 chip. And the crazy thing is, it's so fast that it outperformed the previous M3 MacBook Pro, which used to start at $1,600 with eight gigs of RAM. The new M4 is insane value. I mean, look at Blender 3D rendering, almost three times faster than the M1. Lightroom Classic photo editing export, two and a half times faster. And at the end of our full comparison video that we did, the M4 was left with 57% battery remaining compared to 44 on the M1 Air. And yes, it was a fresh battery, 99% battery health on that M1. And to think that it destroyed it in every single way, and it's still $999, but with 16 gigs of RAM. 
This is the best value laptop ever. I mean, people who still have Intel machines have no idea what they're missing out on. And everyone with an M1 finally has a good enough reason to upgrade to the M4. Also, we've had a lot of Windows competition over the last year, like with the new Snapdragon X chips and Lunar Lake, but the M4 just came out and knocked them out of the park with a $999 price tag. It simply doesn't make sense to buy those unless you're into gaming, but at that point, you should be buying a gaming laptop with a dedicated NVIDIA GPU, which brings you up to about $2,000, like on the amazing Asus ProArt laptops, or also the new ROG Flow Z13 with AMD's new Ryzen AI Max Plus 3, 9, 5G, whatever. That integrated graphics is also good enough, but also a lot more expensive. So for the $1,000 price point, there's literally nothing that can compete with the M4 MacBook Air right now. Everything just works so well that I honestly think that you can buy this, you can upgrade right now and use it for the next probably six to 10 years, no problem, it is that reliable. However, there are some problems and downsides and it's time to address that. Well, the first one is the base storage. Only 256 gigs, that is very limiting. I really wouldn't recommend anyone to buy that unless you're just doing like simple web browsing because if you're doing anything like productivity work or you like to store files, download stuff, I'd recommend at least 512 gigs. But I guess even spending an extra 200 bucks on that upgrade, so 1200 bucks, it's still a really good value. Now downside number two is the display because it still has an LCD display panel unlike the MacBook Pros that have mini LED and it's also so only 60 hertz, so it's definitely nowhere near as smooth as 120 hertz on the MacBook Pros, and a lot of other Windows laptops also have higher refresh rates these days, so it's sad to see the MacBook Air get limited in that way. And the issue is, we're not expecting OLED to come to the MacBook Air until, I guess, as late as 2029. I mean, that's a long time, but I feel like Apple is doing this on purpose, because if they gave it a great display right now, who would want to buy the MacBook Pros. I mean, they're cannibalizing their MacBook Pro model. So Apple is intentionally holding this back in some ways to make sure the techies and pros spend more money. Now, downside number three is thermal throttling because this is starting to take away more performance than ever before having this be a fanless design because check this out. The M4 chip within the M4 MacBook Pro for $1,600, that gets 36% more performance in Cinebench 2024's 10 minute stress test. That is a lot of thermal throttling in this machine. Now, thankfully, if you actually do buy the MacBook Air for performance work, which a lot of people are doing nowadays to help save cash, I mean, a thousand bucks compared to 1600, that's a huge savings to still get the same M4 chip. And thankfully, there are a couple fixes for thermal throttling, which we did test, like this simple laptop cooling stand that's only 28 bucks on Amazon. You put it under the MacBook Air and it improved the performance by 14 percent getting closer to the power of the MacBook Pro. We also tested a simple thermal pad mod with the stand and it improved performance even more up to 864 points, which is 23% faster than the MacBook Air by itself, eliminating thermal throttling for people who want to do productivity work. So that basically means that the new M4 MacBook Air is such a great value that it's the perfect laptop for regular consumers and students who need a reliable, and quick and snappy laptop, and you can also do productivity work just fine with some simple modifications if you're someone who cares about that. So it's basically the perfect laptop for most people in 2025, and I can't believe that Apple is giving us such a good value, especially $950 on Amazon, I'll have the link to that sale in the description below. And honestly, I don't think it's worth waiting for the M5 version because it's rumored to have the same design, same display, definitely no OLED, and it's definitely not getting 512 gigs of storage, and the extra performance of the M5 chip probably won't even matter, seeing as the M4 is fast enough right now, and it's already thermal throttling so much, the M5 is gonna thermal throttle even more. So with 
that said, my recommendation is that everybody who still has an M1 MacBook Air or even Intel, it is finally the perfect time to upgrade to this new crazy beast of a value laptop. This is the perfect laptop in 2025. So hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you did, subscribe above, check out one of those two videos right there, including our thermal pad mod, and also compared to the M1. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.